Hi everyone, this is Mostly Casual Commander. I'm BK, and today I have a game of Commander for you. For this match, we have Kalia of the Vast, Galea, Kindler of Hope, and Veyrin, Voice of Duality. Lastly, we have Yoriko, the Tiger's Shadow. First in the turn order is Kovex, playing Kalia of the Vast, who likes to cheat out big scary threats. He kept seven cards, and that Stone Quarry, Foreboding Ruins, Bright Climb Pathway, Bladewing the Risen, Rune Scarred Demon, Stronghold Overseer, and Anya, Merciless Angel. Next up is me, BK. I'm playing Galea, Kindler of Hope. This is a equipment-focused Voltron deck. I kept a six-card hand with Misty Rainforest, Port Town, Path of Ancestry, Kenrith's Transformation, Open the Armory, and Sensei's Dividing Top. I had to mulligan down to six and put a negate on the bottom of my library. Busterkins is third in the turn order. He's playing Veyron, who really likes to storm off, wants a lot of cheap spells, cantrips, that kind of thing. So he's keeping a seven card hand with Mountain, Island, Storm Kiln Artist, Harmonic Prodigy, Fist of Flame, Gataxian Probe, and a Soul Ring. Kyle is playing Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, keeping a six card hand with Drowned Catacomb, Submerge, Fierce Guardianship, Mistblade Shinobi, Mausoleum Wanderer, and Ornithopter. He's trying to manipulate the top of his deck. He had to mulligan a snuff out to the bottom. So we'll get right into the game. Kovacs leads off with a stone quarry. I play a misty rainforest tap sacket for a canopy vista. Busterkins plays land and a soul ring. Passing it to Kyle who plays a drowned catacomb and a zero cost ornithopter. Kovacs plays foreboding ruins revealing a mountain and lightning greaves. I play a tapped Path of Ancestry and pay one for Sensei's Dividing Top. Busterkins plays a Mountain for turn, taps out for his Commander Veyron, Voice of Duality. Kyle untaps, draws for turn, plays an Underground River, and goes into the red zone with his Ornithopter, swinging for zero at BK. He then Ninjutsu's out, Yuriko, the Tiger's Shadow, dealing one commander damage, revealing the top card of his library, which is an island, doesn't deal any additional damage to the opponents. He then recasts his Ornithopter. Kovacs plays a mountain, and says go. I play a Port Town for turn, and attempt a Kenrith's Transformation on Yuriko, but unfortunately a Fierce Guardianship counters that spell. I don't even get to draw the card. Busterkins untaps and draws, playing an island for turn. He then casts Talran's Sky Summoner, who makes tons of drakes. He attacks Kyle with his commander. Kyle takes the beats, and then Busterkins passes it. Kyle moves right past his main phase into the combat step, and he attacks with the Uriko and the Ornithopter. Yuriko at BK, and the Ornithopter at Busterkins. No blocks are declared, and Kyle ninjutsu's out Miss Blade Shinobi, hitting Busterkins with it, and making him have to bounce Veyron back to his hand. He then reveals the top two cards of his library, the first being Insidious Dreams, draining for four, and Xenograft, draining for five. So all of his opponents lost nine life. He then plays an island, followed by a Mausoleum Wanderer, and then he plays his Ornithopter. Passing it over to Kovacs, Kovacs draws for turn, plays a Plains, taps out for Kalia of the Vast. He then moves to equip his Lightning Greaves to Kalia, but in response, Kyle plays a Submerge. Seeing as BK has a Forest in play and Kyle has an Island, it's free. So this makes Kalia of the Vast be placed on top of Kovacs' library. On my turn, I cast a Soul Ring, followed by Open the Armory. I'm searching for something to deal with Kalia, so I find a Dark Steel Mutation, put it to my hand, and then I pass over to Busterkins. He plays a Mountain for turn, and casts Feyren, Voice of Duality, from his hand. He follows that up by playing Harmonic Prodigy, and Feyren and Harmonic Prodigy together can be really dangerous really fast. On Kyle's turn, he plays a Swamp, and goes right into attack mode. He hits BK, and with Yuriko triggering, he reveals a Hypnotic Siren and a Sage of Epitur, having each opponent lose two life in total. He then casts the Sage of Epitur, 
which allows him to look at the top four cards of his library and put them back in any order. Following that, he plays the Hypnotic Siren as well. Passing it over to Kovacs, he draws his Kali of the Vast for turn, playing it, and equipping the Lightning Greaves. This time it succeeds, and he moves to the red zone with Kali of the Vast at Kyle, and a Rune Scarred Demon hits the battlefield. So now Kovacs can tutor a thing from his library. He also played a Grim Climb Pathway as his land for turn. He then passed it over to BK, but on his end step, I activate Sensei's Divining Top and return those cards in any order on top of my library. Drawing for turn, then I cast the Dark Steel Mutation and have one colorless floating. Following that up, I play Katibri of Mithra Hall, one of the new legendary cards from AFC. Using the one floating mana, I activate Sensei's Divining Top again, and then I pass the turn to Busterkins. He taps mana for Goblin Electromancer, reducing the cost of his future spells. He then casts a Gitaxian Probe. With a bunch of triggers, he gets three Drakes, and Viren and the Harmonic Prodigy get pumped from casting the spell. He then taps and casts a Fist of Flames. Again, more triggers, more Drakes. And he targeted the Fist of Flames at the Harmonic Prodigy. Sadly, Musterkins had a little bit of a misplay that nobody at the table noticed, so he tapped for a blue mana instead of a red mana for young Pyromancer. We all make mistakes, no big deal, we'll get there together. But we allowed it to happen, and the team is pumped, and he has a pretty threatening board presence at this time with all these prowess ability triggers. So Busterkins deals 8 damage to BK and 8 commander damage to Kovacs. Passing it to Kyle, Kyle decides to cast a spell on his end step, which is Chain of Vapor, returning the Darksteel Mutation to BK's hand. I decline to take the Sacrifice a Land and copy the spell ability. Kyle main phases a Mask Wood Nexus, making all of his creatures ninjas, in addition to their other types. He then swings in with all these new ninjas and having three of his creatures attack Kovacs and two of them attack BK. BK puts Caddy Bree in front of the Mausoleum Wanderer, which kills it. Nevertheless, there's still four creatures that have dealt unblocked damage this turn, so Kyla reveals the top four, which are Fabled Passage, Swamp, Island, and a Sensei's Divining Top. Not what he wants to reveal uh, in order to make his opponents lose life. He then plays a Fabled Passage, he sacrifices it, and he fetches up an island, putting it onto the battlefield, and it's untapped. He then casts the Sensei's Divining Top, allowing him to manipulate the top of his library a little bit more efficiently at this point. Kovacs plays a Plains for turn, and swings in with Kalia. On the attack trigger, he drops an Anya, Merciless Angel, onto the battlefield. Anya gets pumped depending upon how many opponents' life totals are less than half of their starting total. Kyle blocks Anya with Ornithopter and takes two commander damage from Kalia. Kovacs passes to BK. I play an island for turn, and then I cast my commander. Galea, Kindler of Hope, and this allows me to have one colorless floating as well. With Galea's ability, I cast a Colossus Hammer off the top of my library, spending my floating mana. And then equips to Caddy Bree of Mithra Hall. I leave her back on defense though, because my life total is really low. On Busterkin's turn, he taps and plays a Mana Geode, another mana rock. He then taps it. And he cast a Storm Kiln Artist, which could be pretty devastating with his current board state. He then considers his combat and attacks with his six drakes, three of them going at Kovacs and three of them going at Kyle. Kyle takes the damage, and Kovacs decides to block one of them with his Rune Scar Demon, taking a total of four damage. On Kyle's turn, he untaps. On his upkeep step, he activates Sensei's Divining Top rearranging the top three cards of his library. Then he plays an island for turn, 
and follows that up with a time warp because he's a degenerate human being. Kyle gets an extra turn after this turn. He moves to combat with all of his ninjas and he targets Kovacs with them but Kovacs has an Archangel Avacyn that he flashes out and uses it to block his misplayed Shinobi as well as Yuriko. So he will not be taking two points of damage there. Still takes the two and prevents everybody from having to drain their life as well. On Kyle's second turn, he untaps and plays an island. He then determines that this is a good time to play a cyclonic rift on overload, bouncing all his opponent's non-land permanents back to their hand. In response, I activate Sensei's Divining Top and look at the top three, rearranging them. Everything goes back to our hands, and Kyle chips in at Busterkins before passing the turn to Kovacs. Kovacs recasts his Lightning Greaves, recasts Kalia of the Vast, equipping the Lightning Greaves to Kalia, and swinging in at Kyle, who's pretty much arch enemy at this point. He drops the Anya back out, and drops Kyle down to 7 life total, passing it to BK. So on my turn, I play an Abundant Growth, which draws me a card and enchants my land to tap for any color. So I draw that card, I then play a Fabled Passage as my land for turn, recast by Soul Ring, and I tap for my Sensei's Divining Top again, and I crack my Fabled Passage and fetch up a Plains to put onto the battlefield. I follow that up with Caddy Bree of Mithril Hall again, and a Path of Ancestry trigger allows me to scry one to the bottom. Busterkin's turn, he plays a Lowly Sandbar, and recasts his Soul Ring as well. Kind of a rebuilding state at this point, after that Cyclonic Rift. He recasts Veyron, Voice of Duality, with one colorless floating, using it to cast Harmonic Prodigy. Over to Kyle now, who untaps and draws for turn. He sends a Divining Top. He draws a card and puts Sensei's Divining Top back on his library. He then moves to the red zone at Kovacs. And with no blockers declared, he ninjutsus out Yuriko. So he deals the one commander damage to Kovacs. And then in response to Yuriko's triggered ability, he casts Insidious Dreams discarding Xenograft and an island, which this will allow him to find two cards from his library and put them on top of his library. In this case, it's a Draco and a Temporal Trespass. Yuriko's triggered ability resolves, revealing the top two cards of Kyle's library, and having his opponents lose life for those cards. In this case, 27 life. So this knocks out all of Kyle's opponents, and Kyle is victorious. Congrats, Kyle. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, tell us what you think, and as always, thank you very much for watching.